That's awesome. But the uh, the final question we had was from William Lombombard, who basically, how do you go from setup punchline to stories? Mm. So I think uh, with like, I think it was, uh, what's, who's the country guy? I, we just watched the special. We just talked about it a couple weeks ago. Country guy. I say country guy. Just, um, I'm forgetting his name. Oh my God. For we just moment. did a breakdown of a special. Not earthquake. No. Uh, uh, all I know is Steve just gave us a $20 super chat. Oh my, let's go, honey. Dinner's on me tonight. It's on me. <laughs> let's go. Nice. Um, Jeff Foxworthy. How did I forget that? Yes. Thanks, Jordan. Jordan yeah, said yeah. Jeff Foxworthy. Thank you, Steve, yeah. as well. So, so Jeff Foxworthy, uh, and you're in the first time that you interviewed, talked about how he does stories of just like writing out the stories, like just as they are, and then going back in and adding the funny parts. It's kind of like how Ron White does them too, right? Just write the story as it is, mm -hmm. and then add funny parts all the way in between. But you gotta be real with the story first, and then you add the funny components. Um, that's how you take storytelling onto the stage more, is it's not set up premise punch kind of thing any longer. It's more, here's a story, now you add the funny inside of the entire story because you can't wait for the end of it to do the punchline. It's got to be funny all the way through. Yeah, that's that's definitely uh, what I heard Chris Titus say as well, who mm -hmm. I don't know if if people have not seen Chris Titus. I mean, he's he the, sells out theaters. He's done a lot of things. I think he's still underrated. Murder. The last two comedy specials that he did on YouTube were spectacular. He does like, he's a storyteller and it's like every line is a laugh. And what, what he said, um, is like, he writes the story out as it happened, not trying to be funny. And mm -hmm. then like he said, every detail is like the setup for a punchline. And that's how he packs in so many different punch. jokes. Now yeah, I will also say that there, another way, if you're going from like one liners of storytelling, what I found in personal experience, cause I personally haven't like written out a story and then like gone back and tried to punch it up. How my, the, the biggest like stories I have, like crying at my wedding is probably my first real attempt at like a story, but the actual story is a bunch of individual bits that add mm -hmm. up to a story. So it's like, yeah. I have the story is like me getting married, planning the wedding and then the wedding and crying at my wedding, which Yoshi was there. Yoshi was the DJ at my wedding. I am so glad there wasn't video. In hindsight, I maybe wish there was, but it's like me crying a suspicious amount is, is like part of the joke. But it's a bunch of small individual jokes that I then For just sure. organize in a way that's more of like a story. But yeah. Yeah. a way to build a one-liner up even more is just like, if you have a one-liner, then it's like, Okay, adding tags to it can yep, and more make details. it more of a story than just like a one-liner yeah. as well. Sure, yeah. And I've done a couple of stories. I've got a couple of stories. But to your point, it's like, I, I think of it as, here's an interesting story. I tell a story about like an HOA that I was a part of that was just like wild and crazy. <laughs> and like when I first tell it. White like, claws it, everywhere. <laughs> but like I had, I was a part of the HOA that was just like crazy. But as I tell the story and I, when I wrote it down the first time I did exactly what Titus did, just write it out the way that it was. And then I started looking at it like specifically, like each line, where is the joke? Where is the funny in each one of these things? And so now that I tell it, it's probably, there's probably a joke every one to two sentences in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. as I'm telling the story. And I think that's the key because then when I get to the crescendo of like the big punchline, they didn't have to wait to laugh. They were laughing all the way through. So then when the punchline hits, it's like, oh, yay. They're like, the audience feels rewarded by it. So I think, yeah, I think that just that premise of just 
tell the story as it is, and then add the funny after you tell the story. Yeah. Simple, sweet, but it works. And then, yeah. And then on the other side of it, if you're writing one liners and you're trying to turn a one liner into a story, it's just expanded out. Like if the one liner is about, let's just say one liner about crying at your wedding. Okay. Bringing in different points of view can start to build into a story of like, you're talking about crying at your wedding. Okay. How did your wife react to it? How did your father-in-law react to it? How did the efficient react to it? Like looking at the one liner from like 360 degrees can help you to actually start to build it out from a single line into an entire story. So yeah, there's a few different ways to do it. Talking about what the DJ thought about you crying, thought about what the DJ play while you were crying, thought about what the DJ actually saw and catching the DJ's eye as you're crying. (laughs) (laughs) I remember, I remember at one point I was wiping my tears with my vows. I was just like, oh, (laughs) <laughs> it's wild that's yeah it was wild abby asked how do you develop that final massive punchline uh i think big thing for that massive final punchline is just working out that you have jokes all the way through the punchline massive punchline is just like a normal setup premise punch kind of thing but because your whole story is the premise the punchline is going to hit because you've already set up everything else. So it's just like having a whole bunch of set up punchlines, set up punchlines, set up punchlines, set up punchlines throughout your entire story, but it's all thematic. Beautiful. 